I didn't hear what the guy was saying, but he was yelling. Um, he kept looking back at me, but she didn't turn her face. Was so afraid of her estranged husband, Cedric Anderson, she spent the last few weeks hiding out with relatives. Um, he's a black male. He's our Mrs. Smith's husband. <laughs> happy wives, happy husbands. The new, new members club. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So for today's case, we have a beautiful special education teacher that dedicated her life to her students and family. She was also a loving wife, but things within her picture perfect marriage started to unravel a devastating result. This is the case of Karen Elaine Smith. Karen Elaine Smith was from Harbor City, California. She was described as very loving, kind, and passionate. She also had a strong foundation in God as a Christian, and she had four children that she raised with her first husband. She was a great mother to her children and always had a passion for teaching. Her mother was also a teacher, so seeing that as a little girl, she always admired that and wanted to follow in those same footsteps. Karen began to first homeschool her four kids because she really wanted to be hands-on. So later on, around the early 2000s, Karen made a decision to go back to school and attend California State University, Sacramento, and get her degree in special education to teach. She always had a passion to help and love on children with autism and learning disabilities. She later graduated in 2005 and completed her degree. She worked within her school district for a couple of years and began to work at Cajon High School in San Bernito in 2010. So for Karen, her career was going amazing. She was doing what she always wanted to do. She continued raising her four children who all graduated college and even though her first marriage didn't last, they ended up getting a divorce after 21 years. Karen still held on to finding love again. In 2013, Karen met Cedric Anderson, a pastor who was very active within the San Bernardo uh, community. Cedric was a pastor for over 17 years and lived all around the world. He was married previously and was a father as well. He was described as a good man and a man that loved the Lord. So when Karen met Cedric, it was a perfect match in her eyes. They both shared common interests as being Christians and shared common values and beliefs. The relationship between them started as friends and then grew into a romantic one. Karen's family and friends expressed from the outside looking in, they were the perfect couple. Cedric treated her like an angel, a common nickname he will often call Karen. But let's just say some people aren't who they portray to be. After four years of a loving and happy relationship, Karen and Cedric decided to give marriage another try and get married. They got married on January 28th, 2017. They had a traditional wedding and Karen was ecstatic. She was on a all-time high. The couple then went on their honeymoon in Arizona and really enjoyed themselves. Okay, Tim. Yeah, Tim. Let's do it. <laughs> it is delicious. <laughs> happy wives, happy husbands. Yeah, happy wives. The new, husband. new members club. <laughs> Tim and Karen, we are having fun. Thanks a lot. Cedric moved in with Karen after the wedding, and once he moved in with Karen in Riverside, Cali, things started to change after the wedding in a very negative way. But Cedric continued to still post tons of pictures and videos about Karen and showing off how happy he was being married after the wedding. So from the outside looking in, things looked, you know, great. Like, you wouldn't really know that 
disturbing things was happening behind the scenes. But on the other hand, Cedric was not who he pretended to be on social media. His behavior changed and he stopped preaching. He expressed to Karen that he wouldn't make much money being a preacher, so he decided to get into construction work and start his own business. And I'm sure Karen didn't think, you know, much into it then, but then she felt in her gut things were a little off with Cedric. So around March 2017, Karen really saw the wolf in sheep clothing. Cedric started to become extremely aggressive and accused Karen of cheating, which wasn't true at all. So Karen was like, look, you know, I'm getting overwhelmed. This is too much. I'm leaving. You know, we only been married for a month and everything is just so chaotic. Like this is not healthy at all. So Karen moved in with one of her older kids that lived close by to take a break from Cedric because one night he threatened that he would kill her. He threatened that he would throw her out a window and the threats continued every day. So Karen didn't feel safe anymore. Not to mention Cedric would still post on his Facebook how much he loved being married, how much he adored his wife, but offline, he's threatening to, you know, take her out and throw her out the window. So it's like there were two sides, like he had two different faces that he was showing people in the public. But with Karen, he was literally acting very abusive and a monster pretty much. Now, Cedric had a dark past prior meeting Karen but I'm not sure if Karen was aware of it or not like I couldn't find much information on it but around the 90s Cedric had a history of domestic assault and battery his former girlfriend accused Cedric of making multiple statements that he wanted to take her out and actually put a pillow over her face and a knife around her neck but around 2014, all charges were dropped. So based off of Cedric's past, there were tons of red flags there. Cedric often begged Karen every day to come back home, but she didn't really feel safe, you know, anymore. She was already contemplating the idea of divorcing Cedric. And in the meantime, she was just gonna focus on what she loved to do the most, and that was being a teacher for her students. Karen showed up for work with a smile on her face and a bright spirit. She kept her marriage problems, you know, to herself. So none of her co-workers knew what was going on back home. Like, you know, Karen really just kept that private. She wanted work to be work and she wanted her marriage back home to be her marriage. Like, I could tell that being a teacher was like her peace, her escape from a lot of the negativity that was going on with her and Cedric. So on April 10th, 2017, Karen went to work and it was a normal day for her and her students at North Park Elementary School. But around 10 a.m., things went left. A horrific call came in from 911. Hi, how can I help you? We have an active shooter. One of our teachers got shot in the, in the classroom. At what school? In North at North Park Elementary. Okay, we'll get you Wait, sorry, Do you have a description of the shooter? Um, he's a black male. He's our Mrs. Smith's husband. He's a black male. Yes, and he's wearing. He was wearing a beige um, blazer. A beige blazer. Yes. Okay, we'll get units out there. And where's the where's the victim at? Um, I think she's she's in her classroom. What classroom is it? Um, B one. Classroom B one. Okay, in B1. Is the guy still on the campus right uh, now? As far as I know, he is. I, I'm scared. I'm in the office. Okay, and there's... okay did you guys lock down? <laughs> Cedric Anderson came to North Park Elementary School with a 357 revolver. He stopped at the front desk and told them he wanted to drop something off for his wife. So he was checked in at the front desk and made his way to Karen's classroom. 
Now it was very common for spouses or close family members to make a quick stop by the school and employees knew you know of Cedric to them you know he was a nice man you know he was Karen's new husband nobody was thinking that Cedric was a very dangerous person at this point. Cedric made his way down to Karen's classroom and when he opened the door he fired his revolver and shot Karen multiple times in front of her students and standing behind Karen were two little boys one eight and nine that was struck by the bullets. Investigators stated that after Cedric unloaded the revolver the first time he ran out of bullets and he reloaded a shot at Karen again, and then he turned the revolver onto himself, taking his own life. When the police finally arrived to the scene and everyone evacuated the building, Karen Elaine Smith was pronounced dead. And what makes this case even more devastating was the fact that the boys um, that were shot one of them made it to see another day, thank God, but eight-year-old Jonathan Martinez didn't make it. There were also two teacher aides in the classroom during the shooting, and they both made it out alive. You know, they both expressed that if Cedric had more bullets, he would have continued shooting, taking everyone else's life as away as well. He actually pointed his revolver at one of the teacher's aide and fired but he was, out of, he was out of bullets and that's when he reloaded his gun. Investigators spoke with Karen's family after her death and really wanted some insight on her and Cedric's marriage. They really wanted to know why Cedric wanted to kill Karen. They searched for clues around the house and even, you know, if Cedric, you know, left letters behind on why he did what he did. Like they were just trying to find something to make sense of this whole horrific event. It's like Cedric woke up one day and knew he was going to take her life away. Or this could have been, you know, something he always wanted to do, but waited for the, the right time to execute it. Tonight, we are learning more about the special education teacher who was murdered from those who knew her best. Karen Smith was not only an educator, she was also a mother of four. Now, her children are speaking for the first time to our Rick Montanez. Rick. And Robert, this is the home she shared with her estranged husband. Detectives searched and cleared the property earlier tonight, telling me they collected documents and storage devices from inside. And for the first time, Karen Smith's grown children telling me their mother would have never gone to school this morning, knowing Cedric Anderson would come after her there. A teacher for 10 years, Karen Smith, we've learned from family sources, was so afraid of her estranged husband, Cedric Anderson, she spent the last few weeks hiding out with relatives. She did not go to that school knowing that she was putting anyone in danger. This is a surprise to us. Over the phone, I spoke with three of Smith's four grown children. They would not discuss the couple's relationship, but shared their mother's love for teaching and their heartbreak over the deadly attack at North Park Elementary. She would be extremely heartbroken over the two students who were directly impacted by today's situation. Nathan Morris shot this cell phone video as SWAT officers rushed to the couple's home in Riverside. A relative was pulled from the house, questioned and released. Detectives spent the evening searching the home and Anderson's BMW. Some neighbors say the couple was nice and peaceful, but others tell me there appeared to be trouble in this relationship too. I've heard arg ar uh, arguing, arguing coming out of, the, out of the windows, yelling, loud noises, but uh, I could never pick out any words. I couldn't really say what was going on at the time. Haley Sumney says two days ago, she saw the couple arguing in their parked car. I didn't hear what the guy was saying, but he was yelling. Um, he kept looking back at me, mm -hmm. but she didn't turn her face. Tonight, Smith's family says the grief is overwhelming. She didn't deserve to die like this. She didn't. And she deserved better. It was very clear that Cedric was not okay mentally at all. And it's honestly a scary thing to know that there are men and even women out here that betray this perfect image. You know, you think these people are like normal citizens of America and come to find out like they're not okay mentally like they would harm you and pretty much harm others 
around you as well even down to sell so, um even down to Cedric's Facebook account and his, you know, his posts. Like, he would say things that you would think, oh, okay, you know, he's stable. You know, he's a preacher, a working man, a father. But then behind closed doors, you know, he's wrestling with his own demons within that are extremely heavy and dark to cause him to want to hurt his wife that he boldly said he loved. The horrific events that happened at North Park Elementary School was devastating, taking away, you know, an innocent student's life and also one of their beloved teachers who they had no idea was caught up in a domestic violent relationship. Karen Elaine Smith did not deserve this at all. A beloved teacher, mother, daughter, and friend. At Karen's memorial service, two of her children, Jenny and Adam, spoke about the strong nurturing, committed, and intelligent mother they had. People who gathered here described this vigil as a celebration of Smith's life and her many roles in this community as a mother, daughter, friend, and beloved teacher. Music filled Grace Chapel in San Bernardino tonight as this grief-stricken community paid tribute to Karen Smith, whose life was taken too soon. My mother was a beautiful woman, inside and out. In the end, my mother will not be remembered by this tragedy. She loved me unconditionally and purposely. And to this day, I live, and I thank God that I lived with no regrets. There was nothing between us that was left unsaid. Among stories of grief was a message of hope. Everything else will go down, but faith, hope, and love will sustain us. Karen is not lost, as has been said. She's in the presence of the Lord. And so shall she ever be, because she served her God, and she finished her course, and she kept the faith. Loved ones say she expressed that faith through her love of music, some of which was played at the church tonight. And if you guys want to watch the full video, the link will be in the description box below if you guys want to watch it. But just to see her kids, you know, express how beautiful Karen was, um, you know, not just on the outside, but in the inside as well really overshadows this tragic case. Most of the cases I do, you know, cover is to bring awareness to a lot of issues we often, you know, overlook within the black community and we often don't take, you know, seriously. And I believe that domestic violence is one of them. And if Karen's story can encourage you to walk away from a relationship or marriage that is very toxic and dangerous then please do so Karen obviously had no problem walking away when things looked dangerous and toxic for her it's just sad that the man that you know she was married to was extremely selfish to take away her life and his own due to control and his own inner insecurities which a lot of abusers battle within you know inside but what he couldn't do is take away all that Karen did on this earth, not only for North Park Elementary School, but teaching children and loving on them. She also, you know, was a great mother. Her children were able to give you just a tiny glimpse of the woman, of the woman that she was. And just that alone, you can tell she was amazing. Well, before we end this case, let's go ahead and pray for the family, you know, of the victim. Father God, first thing first, I wanna pray for Karen's children, Lord. I ask you, Father Lord God, that you bring them rest and peace throughout this whole situation. Even though, you know, they lost their mother a few years ago, 
I'm sure there's moments where they miss her every single day, Father God. So I pray for peace and I pray for closure and I pray for um, inner healing that only you can give them, Father Lord God. I pray for Karen's parents, Father Lord God. I pray that I know it's tough, you know, grieving and losing a child, Lord. So I just ask you that you give them peace and healing as well. All her friends and extended family members that miss her every single day single day i also pray father lord god that you protect women and men you know um even my subscribers father lord god and protect them and give them discernment from people that don't have their best interests lord god there's a lot of wicked people on this earth lord that you know we might think are heaven sent but underneath you know they carry a lot of hurt inside and a lot of you know just pain and it can honestly put us in a very dangerous situation lord god so i pray that you give us the right eyes the right ears you know give us discernment to detect people that um don't have our best interests at heart lord god i pray against you know people that are narcissistic Father Lord God, I pray against that right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Father Lord God, that you heal current people that are in nar narcissistic, abusive relationships, emotional re relationships, domestic violence relationships right now, Father Lord God. You know, I ask you, Father God, that you give them a way out. You protect them while they're leaving the situations, Father Lord God. Let them know that you are very present and wanting to be there and protect them and guide them father lord god just bring healing to families that have lost victims due to domestic violence father lord god and i thank you lord god for just giving me the opportunity to have a platform to speak on different cases real life cases that can eventually help others lord god we will remember karen Elaine Smith as a beautiful teacher, as a great mother, Father Lord God, as a great daughter and friend and family member, Lord God. Let this case be a light for others that, you know, it's okay to walk away from a marriage or situation that's not healthy for you, whether it's physically, internally, emotionally, Father Lord God. So I thank you in advance for all that you're about to do for Karen's family, all the peace and healing and joy and love that you will, Father Lord God, bring them during this season and then some. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Gonna find you, catch you sleeping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. stay woke, baby creep.